Hey, everybody. Happy Saturday to you. I was running like one minute behind today. Hopefully you didn't think I wasn't like wasn't coming today. So let's start this out today. First and foremost, where's everyone from? And because I won't see you again before Halloween, what's your favorite Halloween candy? Why don't you drop that down below? What's going on, Tom from Massachusetts? Good to see you. Come on, so Dave says, come on, where are you? I'm sorry, man. I'm just, I was like looking for my phone and like internet was having some crazy times. But uh, anyhow, good to see you guys on this Saturday. I've got a lot to talk into, talk to you about today. We're going to get into uh, some record sales in terms of homes recently selling here in Orlando, like really big sales, like $10 million plus sales. And we'll dig into kind of what's going on with the real estate market. We are going to get into some inflationary talk. Actually, somebody before we even went live dropped in uh, MTEBOR, no, how do you say that, uh, mentioned that they were curious how inflation is affecting Orlando real estate. That's a great question. Actually, something we're going to talk about today. Talk about Boobash, Disney Plus, not Disney Plus, Genie Plus, and your guys Q&A today and kind of dig in on what's going on here in Orlando. That's my favorite part of the show, talking a little bit about what's important to you guys. So uh, thanks so much for watching wherever you're at today. It does mean a ton. Uh, New York checking in. Patricia, good to see you. St. Charles, Illinois watching. What's going on? <laughs> Appreciate you. watching the dual football and live stream. That's multitasking. I dig it. Thank you so much. Uh, listen, Winter Garden. Appreciate it. Good to see you. I was like 30 seconds late, RK, and you're like on me. I'm just kidding. You're right. I was late. I was freaking out, like trying to get a kid back here. So anyhow, I got my coffee and I'm going to be ready to roll today. I've got my uh, my shirt. Check this out. I got the, the, OG, the OG Mickey shirt. One of my team members got it from me for me from Disneyland this week. She went to Alani and Disneyland brought it back. And I was like, I just feel like it's just, uh, it's perfect for today's show. So anyhow, what, who else we got checking in? What's going on to see NYC iron, my friend. Good to see you, my friend, Natalie from Los Angeles. What's your guys favorite candy? What are you guys, what are you guys digging into as, uh, as Halloween rolls around? Are you guys buying it really early, getting into your stash a little early? That's probably a little bit of us. We went to Boobash last night. And uh, for those of you guys, as people are kind of checking in, we went to Boobash last night and it was great. I think the prices, I forget that, like, they definitely were more expensive um, than I bought them right when they came out. Let's see. Boobash tickets were, I think, are sold out. But the pricing was kind of expensive this year in comparison. And I know a lot of people were frustrated around just sort of the price change. But one of the things that we saw, um, they were giving away like free water, Coke, Dr. Pepper, Sprite, like so free drinks, as many free Mickey ice creams as you could eat as long as well as like, you know, Mickey bars, fruit stick, like all of that kind of stuff was free. They had a ton of uh candy everywhere but the crowds were really low like we we walked on to really every ride i think we waited like three minutes for mine train uh, everything else was pretty much walk on so the experience was really great they split up the they split up the um parades into a few different ones there was no headless horseman so that was a little different than what we were used to um but i think that's just not being able to go last year and being able to come back I think it was worth it. I mean, you start thinking about like you're out there, it's warm and you know, water, you're going to spend probably 10, $15 on water anyway. So the cost differentiation to me wasn't that big of a deal, but anyhow, here we go. Now we got some people checking in Tootsie roll pops. I like it. Disney dreamers, Milky way for sure. Twix. So Dave, we've got a, uh, a little, like you got to fill me in. If you're a Twix fan, you got to let me know. My son says that he sees online that like the left one and the right one are actually made differently. When you get two together, we're going to go buy a pack later and split them up to see if this is true, but we'll see what's going on. Laura, good to see you from Chicago. No frost for you yet. Congratulations. The one benefit, I guess, of global warming, if you were going to say a benefit one way or the other. <laughs> So I'll tell you what, I've got a little secret for you. These, they gave us these last night. They're stick Snickers, peanut brownie. These are, these hold up. These were like, oh man, really good. I'm usually like kind of, usually my favorite is the starburst. I'm not really the, like the chocolate guy, but these Snickers, ooh, goodness. So, so good. Good to see you from Brentwood, California, peanut butter M&Ms. I tell you what, 
super, super good. Rose is checking in from historic Winchester, UK. Rose, I don't know if you've checked in before, but I have a lot of people that check in from the UK. We do this at five o'clock so that it's like, or one o'clock so that it's five hours later, six o'clock for you guys. So you can check in before you eat dinner or while you're eating dinner on Saturday. So I appreciate you checking in from the UK. A lot of people, you guys are going to get to start coming over in early November. And I'm excited. I've got already many, many clients that have been waiting to come over and purchase houses here and uh, that check in with us on our live streams and from our YouTube channel. And I'm excited to see so many of my people from the UK, the EU, and on and on. Almond Joy. Ugh, I'm not sure. Almond Joy. I feel like they're ha they make them. They still make them. And so there's obviously people like you out there that eat them. I just kind of like, mm, I'm not sure. But anyhow, Paul, good to see you, my friend. I like your, uh, I like that the view of the house on there from Facebook. Looking good, looking good. All right, let's get into a couple, a couple things from today. We've got some massive real estate sales here lately, like massive. You had this one over in Winter Park. This was uh, this sold. Oop, let me back this up. This one sold in September for. $10 million. And at the time I had not seen anything sell for $10 million in central Florida in a very, very long time. And so this house was actually the old former's Rollin college. I'll open this up for you. Cause so you can take a look the Rollins college, uh, like music theater. If you could check out from the water, like that view right there is so amazing. So it's surrounded by just remarkable, insane houses. This thing was $12 million is what it was listed for sold for 10 million. And kind of crazy, right? But then all of a sudden, yesterday, for those of you that haven't seen yet, uh, Shaq finally closed it on his house. Finally, after all these years, three years on the market, originally listed at 10, or I'm sorry, $28 million, and finally closed for $11 million. And so, um, I mean, the, the frontage on Lake Butler is remarkable. Actually, if you can see here, it's like, the frontage here on the back, and then you've got the road, you've got Chase Road that kind of comes through here and then connects over to the other lakes. Really a premier spot. Um, the biggest thing, house is 31,000 square feet. And uh, I had done a video about it. Some of you found me because of the video that we did. And you know the house just needed a lot of work. And so you're barely buying like land value plus the shell of the house. And somebody's gonna come in here and easily spend two to $4 million renovating and then it's going to be just an incredible incredible house uh, but this is the most expensive house in all of windermere ever on record to sell and rec and windermere is like where isleworth is where this is located you've got a lot of high-end real estate on the water here uh, but there's never been another house to sell for that much money but the last one i'll show you today just to sort of cue you in on like the luxury market and people are still spending money here is this one, this is in orange. This is 32836. So this is right ne next to Windermere. Uh, this property is 11,000 square feet. It was only on the market for 49 days. Listed at 12,950. Nine bedrooms, 10 baths. This thing sold for 12,500,000. 12.5 million, sorry. And it's a, it's a pretty sick house. I mean, geez. an amazing amount of land, but $12 million. And so I keep thinking, you know, is the market slowing down? We've talked about this in the past and I'm going to start getting through some of your questions here in just a minute, you know, but like, is the market slowing down? Is inflation taking hold? I think a lot of people, especially with people with money are investing in real estate really to help hedge their inflationary bets, which makes sense to me. Um, when you have an actual tangible asset, instead of just leaving your money in the bank makes sense. So that's why, I mean, even though some parts of our market are slowing down, not all of them are, it's still a really strong seller's market, but the luxury market is still, still on fire. And historically, usually the luxury market is what kind of signals a recession when people start kind of like the luxury market starts softening and then everything else kind of like falls into, into line over time. Well, now the luxury market's still going just absolutely not. So uh, let me know what you guys think here down below. I'm going to check in with some more of you guys. Lima, Peru, Patrick from Peru checking in. That's so cool. Good to see you. Uh, from Tampa, from Lake Zurich, Illinois. Good to see you. Johnny, you're back up in Michigan. Man, 
I feel for you, but you know, you know, you know, you can move here anytime you want. Utilize your space down here. Uh, Jay, my family, we did, we had matching some matching t-shirts, but that was pretty much it. We didn't go all out this year. Um, we weren't really sure if the whole family was going to go until kind of the last minute I had bought tickets. We were going to go with some friends and then we ended up bringing the kids along instead. And we had just an amazing time. They were total troopers. And that's, oh, that's the other thing with, with the boobash. Now it's not just, it used to be from like, I think something like eight to 11 or something like that. Now it starts at nine and goes to midnight. So if you got like really little ones, you want to get a nap in before, or just, you know, I guess continue to sugar them up until they pass out. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, it's, it was, it was kind of wild. Uh, I heard the merriest party will have the full parade. We have not bought tickets yet. We have not bought tickets yet. Free drinks and snacks, <laughs> Mindy. Yeah. I mean, listen, free drinks and snacks, that stuff adds up. It does add up $4 per bottle. You get two or three bottles for the, I don't know. You're right. It's just justification on what you're paying, but we had a really good time and really that's what matters. Is that uh, the experiences? Yeah, Mindy mentioned that the the boo, boo, boo bash tickets were sold out. I did and got in one night that was sold out. Oh, interesting. Oh, interesting. All right, so let's keep going through here. We bought together. I know we bought together. Of course I do. I know that's why I'm calling out your your house there, Paul. It's a beautiful home. That's why I'm calling it out, my friend. <laughs> oh my gosh. What's going on, Farmer George? All the Laffy Taffy. Mm. Now, Laffy Taffy comes in a lot of different flavors, as do like Starburst. And, you know, Starburst, I think are the best other than the yellow ones. The yellow ones, I literally throw in the trash because they taste like Lysol in a candy. Um. Uh, 31,000 square feet, Jennifer. Yeah. Shaq's house, 31,000 square feet. It is. Um, it's interesting because a lot of that was the gym and the, the, the basketball court and all that kind of stuff. Probably my guess is something like 10,000 square feet of that was, but still 20,000 square feet of livable space. It feels like a maze when you're walking through it. And so I'm really, <laughs> really going to be interested to see what people do to the house and how it looks in the future. Um, all right. So, Hey, Ken, where you think I can find lands for sale other than the MLS, we're looking for to develop residential lots. So I think when you're looking for land off market, we do a lot of off market deals. We're doing a lot of direct mail right now and just mailing people at their tax records. So obviously there's no mailbox on an empty property. Um, so if you're looking for specific property in different areas, whether that's residential already built or you're looking for vacant land, direct mail still works really, really well. I don't know about you guys, but the only real mail I get nowadays uh, I don't get very like real mail, I guess is what I should say. I get a lot of spam. I get a lot of people that are mailing me just garbage. And then when I get something that's actually looks good, that's handwritten, that's like, oh, like, oh, it sticks out. I'm excited because I got a piece of mail that wasn't just something that I throw out. What's going on? New York, New Yo Rican. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. I always look forward to uh, doing the videos. So thank you for this. What's up, Chase Farmer? Chase Farmer's in the building, ladies and gentlemen. Chase Farmer, if you guys don't know, he's the guy that helped us put together the Orlando Reel, the website, the, the cool videos. If you guys didn't see the 10 days of Disney facts on our Instagram, the guy is, uh, he is a ridiculously talented man. Uh, yeah, AK, Shaq's house did sell for $11 million, a $17 million discount. So a total steal at 11 million. If you had it, somebody did. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. Let's see. Are cash buyers in the millions? So let's see the cash buyer. Yeah. So, so the, the top sale that closed at 12 million was an all cash buyer Shaq's house, all cash buyer. Most people aren't financing even in these super low. Yeah. The other one, the old Rollins college place, all cash buyer. So yeah, these guys aren't financing much at all at all that they're just paying cash. I had a few clients last year or even this year, I guess it's still 2021 that have purchased in the two to $3 million range and they finance like half. They'll putting down like half. And then they're like, listen, I'm going to lock in in the twos or threes and, um, you know, enjoy those low interest rates to let my money work for me. But these really big ones, a lot of these guys, I think, 
again, I think this is just really more an inflationary play, which actually brings me to this question. Somebody actually asked early on, and I don't want to skip over it because they, they paid for the question, which you don't have to do that. I appreciate it. Definitely got my attention. But uh, he said, what do I think about inflationary issues right now? And what's, what's going on? So here's the thing. Market Watch just said Americans will have to get used to high inflation at least until the end of 2021. And so like, what does that actually mean? Well, going through the report, you're talking about how the Fed mentioned that they thought that it was going to be something like 4%, which they raised it for their estimation from 3.4%. But then you start looking at some of the other ones, the consumer price index, and it's an even 5.3% increase. And so I don't know about you guys, but you know, everywhere from the gas pump to the grocery store to real estate, everything is more expensive. And it's not just because like on the real estate side, because all of a sudden people are losing their minds buying houses. Um, obviously that's part of it. Rental rates in Orlando went up over 35% in the past year. So if you had a 2000 square or $2,000 a month rental bill, um, on average, now that same house is 25 to $2,600 a month. And so it's making people go purchase more houses. It's making people move out farther. These apartments that I talked about a couple of weeks ago, when I talk about affordable housing, you know, really people are flocking towards apartments. Um, it's quite interesting. And so the Fed's talking about, well, next year, uh, we think it's going to go back down to a, a normal 2.2% rate. I don't know how that they can forecast that. Maybe they're right. Maybe they're wrong. But um, here's kind of what they're looking at right now. U.S. inflation pressure, 12-month rate inflation. So you've got consumer price index. We are as as red as you can be in terms of just your daily goods. If you look over here, personal consumption expenditures index minus food and energy. All of these things are pointing to the fact that we are in inflationary time. And so if you're buying a house, you're locking in your price, right? That's the thing that I keep telling folks is like, yes, um, pricing on homes, will they go down? Will they go flat? I don't know. But you're locking in your monthly payments on your home and you're not having to worry about rent prices skyrocketing. And if this sounds like a, a, a commercial for buying real estate, well, I am a real estate agent, but either way, like we just refinanced our house, got a lower interest rate and we're staying put. And now I know my monthly expense, expenses are locked in other than maybe insurance and taxes. Yes. But regardless, you're paying for those in rent as well. So anyhow, uh, let's see. Um, a lot of good questions are already pouring in. So I appreciate this. So Dave, does Shaq still live in the Orlando area? No, I guess he owns a place in Atlanta and also Miami. When I went to the house, he had a Rolls Royce there in the garage. So apparently like when he came and it was like a newer Rolls Royce truck. So people were saying like when he was in the Orlando area, he would stop in, get his car, use the house every once in a while, but like not at any kind of major way. And then the last time he listed it, they, they actually got rid of everything out of the house just to sort of like clean it up a bit. JG says, what do I think about Zillow no longer buying houses? Possible indication. So I said this on my Instagram the other day of like, hey, Zillow, uh, they stopped buying houses. They're saying because they have too many. Um, but here's what Zillow was doing. They were going in, and if your house was worth half a million dollars, they were paying five twenty five dollars for it. And they were still charging you closing costs and all this other stuff, but they were overpaying so that they could cut out guys like me as a listing agent. And it got frustrating for sure. I, I was very clear about it. And honestly, if the numbers made more sense for you uh, to sell to them, you know, go ahead. But here's what's going on now is that a lot of these people that have been promised a contract by Zillow, some of them aren't going to close. And Zillow's on some places saying, hey, we're not going to continue buying houses, at least for the end of the year, because we have this backlog of houses. And so what they were doing is a lot of times listing in this in this scenario, buy a $500,000 house for five twenty five, dollars then they were just turning around and relisting it for sometimes five hundred, dollars losing money, which was at $25,000 di uh, differentiation. And they were using that as their business model to try to gain market share. Well, you can only lose money on every home you buy for so long, right? And so in some markets, they were overpaying for houses. And then thankfully, the market saved them, bailed them out, and prices went up. Uh, and so they were able to make some money on some houses and lost money on a lot of them. So I don't think it's a sustainable business model because you're trying to get into the market and try to get this massive market-wide adoption. Now, it's no different than you turning in your car or trading in your car at a dealership, right? Sometimes you, you usually get a little bit less than if you were to sell it on your own. 
And so um, we'll see. We'll see if their, their business model plays out. I do think that um, a lot of these iBuyers are a little bit more aggressive than they probably should given this market. And a lot of them are unfortunately propping up the market in a false way, right? Because if people are consistently purchasing houses for more than they're worth and you're continuing to take the market up, now you and I, as we're out trying to buy houses, we're all of a sudden paying more and more and more to prop up Wall Street, if that makes sense. And so I don't think it's a good thing long term, but what do I know? I'm good. I'm good with competition. I also want it to be good for the consumer. And uh, if you're paying more for your house because Zillow or off OfferPad or Open Door or one of these other 50 iBuyer programs out there, doesn't really make sense, especially when we've already got inflation to deal with. Um, NYC Iron says, my kids enjoyed your last your last video, Neo City to be exact. They're saying they want to buy condos there, your future clients. Yeah, that's awesome, man. That whole Osceola County area is going to be really impressive to watch. So Neo City, Sunbridge, there's a lot of stuff going on in Osceola County that's going to be quite quite amazing. Um, yeah. Yep, Charlie, I did. So any luck speaking to Toll Brothers about Laurel Point and those over Laureate Park 2 about the mysterious delays? So funny enough, Laure Laurel Park 2, Laureate Park 2, I'm sorry, um, went live today. They have a whopping 10 lots. And pay attention to this if you guys are in the new construction realm or something that you're interested in. Um, so they have 10 lots and literally hundreds and hundreds of people on their waiting list. They're going to do highest and best. There's two builders in there right now. There's Craft Homes and Dream Finders. Funny enough, though, Dream Finders owns Craft Homes, so that's interesting. Um, but they're going to do highest and best by tomorrow, it seems, on those 10 lots. And uh, and we'll see how it goes. And then in 45 days, they'll start releasing more. Um, but there's really no, there's not even like roads back there right now to see what you're really buying. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, Laurel Point, it sounds like they're going to be launching within the next 45 to 60 days. Uh, and then Toll Brothers over in Sunbridge is going to be launching sometime in like early February. So Toll Brothers, I, they have a lot of land and a lot of opportunity. So does Pulte. So does DreamFinders. And so it seems to me that when I'm talking to these builders, they're all telling me sometime in the next like 45 to 60 days all the way to early Q1, they're going to start releasing more and more inventory, which I think is going to be great for sort of relieving some of the pressure of our market. Um, but yeah, we'll see. You know, here's an interesting little stat. I was talking to somebody at Toll Brothers this week and I was asking, hey, how's your Bella Kalina product going? Bella Kalina, for those of you who don't know, that's like out in, uh, it's like out west, nor northwest from Orlando. And um, it's a gated community. It's golf, golf community, like amazing. It feels like you're in another country living there. Like, like you've been transported to Tuscany, rolling hills, brick roads, stone, everything. It's beautiful. They were telling me that, hey, we were thinking about, they opened up like two and a half months ago. And they're like, we we're hoping to sell like one $2 million ish home a month there. And, um, and then that, that would be like, hey, we're good to go. They sold five in their first two months. So more than double um, what their anticipated goal was. And they said that they can't get, you know, trades and things started quick enough um, because there's a lot of demand. And homes there go all the way down to like the sevens like high sixes, low sevens, and then all the way up to four or 5 million and Bella Kalina. So yeah, here you go, Dave. So lots in Del Webb Oasis. This is over in Horizon West. That's their 55 and older community. Um, yeah, their, their lots are up to a hundred thousand dollars. So yeah, if you want like a good view, like firework view, not backing up to another home, you're paying a hundred thousand dollars just for the lot. Hey, Caroline, uh, great work with Riley from your team. Oh, awesome. Thanks so much for saying that. Uh, quick question. Does out of town investor need to register with Florida state renting out investment properties? Uh, if you're going to do it short term, yes. Long term, no. So if you are going to be a short term rental, you have to, you have to register as essentially like a hotel or a business. You got to hang your business license in the house. Although not everybody does or should. Um, but no, not as a long term investor. 
Um, Tracy Hunt says, are there any huge products projects coming up to Horizon West? So you have um, basically the last section of Horizon West that's getting ready to be launched. Um, that is going to be Village I. It's right around along Avalon and where Flamingo Crossing is and Western Way. If you're looking at the map, that's where the, that's at. You have Ashton Woods, Taylor Morrison, MI Homes, Toll Brothers, Pulte, uh, Lennar. You've got a lot of builders still out there. So I think there's just under 3,000 more homes to be built in Horizon West. So plenty of options. If that's something that you're looking for in the Horizon West area, uh, just shoot us an email, info at posicgroup.com. And, uh, and we'll get you hooked up on exactly what you're looking for. Um, who's t whose stock took a beating? AJ, who, whose stock took a beating? Dropped 10% plus. Dream find, if you're talking about Dream Finders, yeah, their, their stock took a beating. I think because they missed projections on deliverables um, for, for new property, if that's what you're talking about. But. What's up, Adam, my Denver friend? Good to see you, man. <laughs> Buck Buck says, hey, Ken, where's the best chicken finger restaurant in Orlando and why is it Zaxby's? I disagree. My favorite, and I actually just be, just because you said it, I'm probably going to go there today, is Chicken Guy at Disney Springs. And they're also opening one over in Winter Park. So Guy Fieri owns a chicken finger restaurant. You've got like 25 different sauces. The fries are amazing. The fried pickles are amazing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Super good. Yeah. Farmer George will have inflation, high inflation through 2023, then back to modern. I, I feel like that that's more realistic, especially based on our supply chain. I was reading somewhere, I think it was in the Atlantic this week, and they were talking about how uh, they took a, a boat tour around basically the West Coast, all of these shipping areas into LA and how many shipping yards were just stacked with containers that were full of product, but they couldn't get them up and out into the country. And so if we don't fix our supply chain issue just in general, um, we're going to have a problem. I know DeSantis here in Florida said like, Hey, we're open for business. All our ports are open. So we'll see if people start shifting back around to Florida. If that happens, I mean, that's going to be great for the state even more, um, beyond what we're already doing. So, yep. Um, if you're talking about how do you get a list of vacant properties, uh, your, your photo would make me believe you're a real estate agent because you've, you're dressed in a suit with a house behind you, but I could be wrong. Um, if you don't know how to do it as an agent, ask your broker. If you are a buyer and you're interested in purchasing some land with us and our, our company, um, just reach out to me, info at posicgroup.com and we can run lists for you. We can do all the marketing for you, find you some off-market stuff. Okay, Grape Laffy Taffy, Pink Starburst. I can get on board with this, Jennifer, in terms of candy. That's pretty fantastic. Uh, Grape Laffy Taffy, yeah, 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 Pink Starburst. Let's see, let's see if I get lucky right here. Here we go. Okay, yellow. This means this is this is this is gonna go in the garbage. And, oh my gosh, how unlucky can you get? Two yellows in a row. That's the worst. Um, don't come at me with kids that can't get candy. Mm. Uh, Sean says, I love Horizon West, but a little out of our price range. Any similar areas or areas that you think will become like it? So I've been saying for a long time that I think Claremont is kind of going to be the next Horizon West, especially once the roads get in. I think there's just so much land in Lake County in general. You've got like Claremont, Mineola, Groveland, and they just sort of go in a row out as, as you go farther west um, and north. So much land and you've got beautiful topography. You've got sort of builders kind of clamoring over themselves to get big pieces of land purchased. And so when that stuff starts happening, I think that you're going to really enjoy seeing kind of what happens. And so for about a hundred to $150,000 discount, you can get to Claremont over Horizon West. And so, um, yeah, something I think about. Yeah. What's up, Kyle from the from the 835 Metro West? What's going on? Uh, spent a lot of time on the Butler chain over the years. Shaq and Ken Griffey Jr. used to frequently tear up the lakes on their sea dues. I yeah, I've heard the stories. A lot of a lot of people live on that chain. Like a lot of famous people over the years 
Um, I know like Prince Fielder who played for the Tigers then the Rangers, he lives on the lake. There's a lot of people. Actually, I've got a friend of mine who does boat tours and um, he has like a list of like 30 different celebrities that have lived or currently live on the Butler chain. Pretty cool. Um, let's see. With the growth of Bella Kalina, do you think downtown Mount Verde will ever develop in mirror with downtown Winter Garden? You know, I don't know Bella Kalina is big enough to demand something like that. I know a lot of people that live in Bella Kalina end up driving down towards Winter Garden a lot. You know, it's 15 minutes away. Not bad at all. Um, I, I, I think that downtown Claremont has a quicker opportunity to become the next Winter Garden if you go down to downtown Winter Garden or downtown Claremont, check out my video we did. It says like moving to Claremont or living in Claremont. Um, the downtown there's super cute. And you've got a lot of like, there's a new food hall that just opened up, new more and more restaurants opening up. And so if you live in Bella Clina or Mont Verde, you're going to be 15 minutes away from downtown Claremont, 15 minutes away from downtown Winter Garden. And I think that that is what you need to think about in regards to your day-to-day -day life. So give me a second. Let me... Let me get a coffee drink here. All right. So, um, gosh, you guys came with some questions today and I, I, I love it. I love it so much. Um, all right. So let's, here we go. Rob F any condos in celebration with a low CDD. Most seem very high looking for a permanent home. So unfortunately CDD is set throughout celebration, depending on really like assessed value purchase price, they're going to be similar throughout. So there's no like low CDD. Unfortunately, it's going to be what you see is what you get. Um, I will tell you that like artisan park back in celebration is the most expensive for HOA. And you got the condo HOA, the celebration HOA, the artisan HOA, plus the CDD, very expensive to live there. You do get your own like bar and like really cool amenities for living in artisan park, but, uh, it's expensive. And so if you're looking for a cheaper HOA, I would go not downtown, mm, not to North village. I would look in like the spring park area. So right off of celebration Ave right in the middle, kind of like farther away from downtown, maybe a mile and a half. There's a bunch of like spring park terraces that I think are probably the best value because you can get like a two or three bedroom all on one level. There's an, there's an elevator in the building. They're only three stories high park is right across the street. Um, so if I'm going condo personally, that's where I'm looking. Um, pink is the favorite starburst. See? Yeah. Yeah. Yucky yellow. Yeah, exactly. Tomas says chicken guy is the best. Have one here as well. Ugh, I thought we were like one of the one of the, the first. Um, Andrew, my friend, good to see you. I hope you guys are loving the new house. Um, three, three. Obviously, you already know Atlas. Dreamscapes is another one. Um, pools by Bradley. Those are like the three big ones. Um, Holland Pools would be the fourth. Those are the four biggies in Orlando that um, aren't going to take your money and run. <laughs> um, plenty of other ones that, that would looking at a second home or apartment in O-Town really soon live in Miami. And the new bright line is a great thing to travel up to the, up to 407. Um, what's the base place to be close to the parks at a good price? Hmm. So question would be, do you want to rent it out while you're not there? That's going to help you really decide if you want to rent it out while you're not there on a short-term rental basis, then you'd be looking at like reunion, Davenport, champions gate, Polk County kind of stuff. If you want to be like near O town West, I would, there's some townhomes. There's some three story townhomes with firework views. You can see Disney Springs from the top floor of your, of your townhome. Uh, Pulte built them. They just finished last year. I would take a look at those. I think those are really cool. They're well-built. Um, there's not many of them. I think there's 60 right there in O-Town West. And honestly, I think that once O-Town West is built out, those are going to go crazy. They're going to be gangbusters. They're right next to Ruby Lake. Um, but there's plenty of other options. If you want, you know, Dr. Phillips is right there. You can be 15 minutes from Disney, five minutes from Universal. Um, so yeah, reach out. We'll definitely give you some good ideas. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about this. 
Let's do this. So Vanessa G says, price out of Lake Nona, looking in St. Cloud, which areas are new construction in St. Cloud would identify the closest to benefit the Lake Nona lifestyle? Well, you're talking about the Narcusi strip there. Um, obviously right off of 417 on Narcusi, especially well, like multiple times a day, the traffic can be a nightmare, but they are adding an extender off of 417, getting back around to Narcusi, which I think is going to be a brilliant thing for so many people to be able to get to St. Cloud quicker. Um, but if you look over at Sunbridge, which Sunbridge, they're going to start selling right now. The only thing in Sunbridge is the 55 and older community, but come Q1, um, we are, they're going to start releasing their first phase of they're calling it Westland park. And it's going to feel very similar to Lake Nona in terms of like, um, like Laureate park. It's actually a lot of the same builders. Um, you've got Ashton Woods, Toll Brothers, David Weekly. Dream finders that are going to be building in there. And I'm just very high on, on what Sunbridge is going to be. I was able to talk to the marketing department over at Tavistock. Um, there we're going to be doing a full video tour actually, hopefully next week or the week after. So early November, mid November, we'll be releasing that video and give you guys a full, like behind the scenes, muddy boot tour, flying the drones through off-roading in the truck, uh, to get a really good feel of what Sunbridge is going to be because if you look at what like Lake Nona has become, and if you're a fan of that, but you've been priced out, Sunbridge is going to be your natural progression of, of going from there. If next year is too long for you to wait, to start to build, because then you're really not probably moving in until early 2023, then I would go look at um, Moss Park, Meridian Parks, and Randall Park, which are all just like the next exits right up 417, which give you like close proximity to Lake Nona, but like you're going to save easily a hundred thousand um, dollars from there. Hopefully that's helpful. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> Ned Kelly, you just send me your address over, over uh, across the, the pond there, and I will send you all my yellow starbursts. I'll just start saving them in a box, and then we'll we'll ship them out to you, a little care package. The yellow, you know, it's like, you know, you've heard, like in the north, we say don't eat yellow snow. In the south, I don't eat yellow starbursts. <laughs> uh, Jose, um, I'm not sure if you were the one that reached out to me about this or not, um, but somebody else did on Instagram. And uh, if you're not following me on Instagram, it's at Ken Posick. Uh, my name it's down here somewhere, I'm sure. Um, and so, uh, toll brothers released, there are some townhomes that are starting in the close $400,000 range. I'll tell you what DR Horton is like mid to high threes for their town townhomes. And so if you're looking a little bit farther away over in, um, uh, the toll brothers neighborhood, it's escaping me right now over an ovation, West Haven of ovation. Um, I think it's a good value. Toll Brothers built a really good townhome. If you look what they built over in Lakeshore, those are super nice. They stand the test of time. They've got nice finishes. Um, they hold up outside and in. And so I think $400,000 for a townhome, while it seems like a lot, you're going to be right next to everything over there in Flamingo Crossing. And so um, I think, I think you know, you can't find a house under four fifty five hundred now in Horizon West. So your natural next step, if you want the area over home single family would be like a townhome and i think 393 is where you're at bro yeah i know jay i i believe it man and it's um i would be completely transparent like i've talked about this the other day i was like if i got paid by these guys one way or the other i would tell you but i i think that there's been so many terrible builders and so many terrible neighborhoods out there that I'm just trying to be as, as transparent as possible. I do think Tavistock moves extremely slow. That's one of their downfalls. I mean, they could have really taken advantage of this market if they developed lots faster and they weren't so tough on the builders. Um, they would tell you that it's going to make a better product in the future. And that's why they take their time. Could be. Could be. So Ben, if you... Um, yeah, for sure. Will that be in the Orlando Real? Being non-natives, we have no clue. Yeah, Ben, for sure. Go so go check out the the um, the Orlando Real today. We actually just launched a a, a new article. We launched we launched new articles every single day. Actually, the Orlando Real dot com. Getting these like 
privacy errors, errors. But if you go over to the Orlando Reel right now, um, this one's pretty cool. This eSend Market article. If you've never been to the eSend Market, they've got a cool like that's where Gideon's actually Gideon's, which is now in Disney Springs, started in East End Market. And uh, we did a whole article around Gideon's as well. But um, there's like a little baker in there. There's a whole bunch of like uh, raw juice shop. There's coffee shop in the back. Um, yeah, we're going to start putting out more and more like little lifestyle kind of things outside of chain restaurants. Because if you've watched any of my content, you know, I'm not a huge chain restaurant fan. And so make sure you're following along on the Orlando Reel. Thanks for mentioning it. Um, they're already selling. So Charlie, they're already, yeah, they already went through their first seven or eight lots. They're selling off of the, um, they're selling off of their VIP list and or their agents that they work a lot with. And so if you want me to help you get you there, um, I can just reach out. We'll help you out. So here's a question from Danny. I think it was good. So where do I see the Orlando housing market headed in 2022? Slight adjustment, rate increases, et cetera. Well, I mean, rate, in, rate increases are a nationwide thing. I do think that the, the interest rates will have to start going up to combat inflation. We know we've already gone over. Inflation is, is getting higher. Um, and so I think that's going to hopefully temper the market a little bit. I told you guys a couple weeks ago, maybe a month ago now that I felt the market was starting to slow down. All of a sudden, I feel like it's starting to pick up again. You know, we had like a, a month of like, instead of rabid people going crazy on all of our listings now, and that slowed down. Now it's starting to pick up again. And so it's um, just interesting to watch. But I think that we'll still see probably a six to 8% in increase in pricing in Orlando. So let's let's bookmark this today put it on your calendar a year from now to see if I was right. Six to 8%. Realtor.com has their economist who actually is really quite good. He thinks nationwide, we're going to increase another 11% next year, partially because of inflation, but partially because of the lack of inventory. And so um, we'll see if that holds true. <laughs> another Kelly here. You could be American relative. Here we go. Let's go. Mm -hmm. This is a good question from Ethernet. You guys hear my my squeaky chair? I got this squeaky chair I've had forever. I've got a new chair being built, actually. Oh, man, I can't wait to tell you the story on that one. Um, it's very cool. And uh, anyways, once I get it and I actually have it, then I can tell the story and not like hope that it doesn't happen. I don't want to jinx it. But I'm having a new chair belt. Anyways, this thing is creaky. I'm excited to get rid of it. Let's talk about Ethernet, though. Um, so can anyone tell me why Magic Village seems to be not sought after? There's ton of unit, tons of units for sale, long time on the market. It seems to be the closest community to the parks. So the closest community to the parks that has like a ton of traction is like Windsor Hills, which Windsor Hills is a little bit older. The problem with Magic Village is really the location. And they're asking a massive premium and you have to buy their furniture package and you have to use their on-site management. And so all of those things kind of have a, um, for an investor, not the greatest, not the greatest deal for a primary resident person, tougher to swallow. And so, um, they have other options, you know, until there's not a better option, they're going to be sitting. And so I think they flooded their own market and they kind of created a marketing package. That's not the greatest. Um, in regards to just kind of shoving down your throat, like our furniture, our management company, our pricing, we already chose all the finishes. It's just a hard product to sell. It really is. Um, I think that eventually as like 192 gets built out, some of the areas get built out, you'll have more and more, um, demand for it. But right now it's just a tougher sell. I'll tell you what. Uh, Chris asks, uh, the future development in Howie in the Hills. I've, I've, I've personally never built, never sold anything in Howie, Howie the Hills. Um, I know my teammates have, and really what you need to know, Chris is like anything outside of Orlando, that's slightly affordable. Things are getting spread out. The farther you get outside of the, of the core and the cheaper it is, I think that's a good buy. Natural sprawl is happening and it's happening faster than I ever imagined. Um, I've said this before, like I, when I first moved here, people would say like, like Oh, you like, Horizon West is so far away, even though it's like 10 minutes from Disney, but like compared to everything else, it was like so far away from 
Dr. Phillips and Windermere. And they were like, you're, you know, I can't believe anybody would live all the way on Avalon road because Avalon road was like a, a two way road. Seidel was a two way road. Now those are four lane highways. There's shops coming in everywhere. Neighborhoods coming in everywhere all within like five years, like massive, like 10, 15,000 homes in five years. And so I think that, uh, areas like Howie in the Hills, Montverde, uh, Mineola, Groveland, Claremont, like we're going to see those really grow up fast. And so if you can, if you can handle the ride, you know, handle the drive to wherever you're going to work, I would, Howie in the Hills, I think it would be a great investment because it's right now super affordable, whereas so many other places are not. Yeah. So here's a good one. So can you show the trending numbers, new builds, dropping prices? So uh, all right, let's do this. So I actually have this number pulled up because this is something that I do on the show. So here's a market watch over the past week. We have new listings. There's 757 new listings, which is actually really low. Those numbers were trending like eight, 900 for the longest time. Price increases 120. That's going to be more bu builders. Price decreases. This is an interesting one. We talked about this recently. You had a lot of properties lower their price. Here's another one back on market. We have had a lot of appraisal issues for quite some time. So most of the time it's either a bad mortgage or a bad appraisal. Or like when I say bad, I just mean like lower than the purchase price could be a great appraisal, but if it doesn't support the purchase price, a lot of those houses are going back on the market and then sold though. So sold is still outnumbering the new listings, right? So you have 962 houses sell in the past week. And this is for like the five County area. And then you had 757 that were listed. So we're still in a, in a massively, oh, and then get this. This is stupid. 1,189. And like, how, do, how can that be so many more than the new listings? Well, a lot of that's new construction. Like builders, once they put something under contract, then they put it on the MLS. So it kind of skews the numbers a little bit. But overall, the market is still a super strong seller's market. Average days on market is still like 24, which is like really low. Three months gets us a stable market to where the mar the market is just kind of like going up one to two percent a year. Um, so less than one month, the market is still extremely extremely strong. But I will tell you, CMB from Connecticut, um, builders have been reaching out to us saying, "Hey, so um, our traffic has started slowing down a little bit. Um, we'll start offering a little bit of incentives." Some builders were like offering us zero commission for the longest time, like zero. They weren't paying realtors at all. They're like, we don't, we've got a thousand people in line to get in here and buy a house. So we don't need you. And so now those people are calling back like, oh, sorry, um, <laughs> my bad. We, we kind of, now that we've slowed down, we need the agents again. So can you, can you bring people back into the door? And so they're starting to pay us and they're also paying a little bit of incentive to buyers. And so those things to me do signal that signal that some builders in some pockets overbuilt, like they had, they had all of these spec homes that they were like, Hey, we're going, you know, instead of you picking a lot, picking a, a property, picking out your finishes, all that kind of stuff. They just said, forget you guys. We're just going to build what we think you want. We're going to build a hundred of them at a time. And hopefully the market eats them up. And then some of these builders have been like, oh, shoot, we only sold 65 out of the 100. We need to get offload these 35 before we can start the next process. And so those are all little indicators, right? Not one of those things makes the market softening one way or the other, but they're little indicators that I pay attention to on a weekly and monthly basis to figure out where we're going as a market. I think Groveland would be the next one faster if I had to choose of the two. Yeah. So you've got, uh, Rob, any more new builds for 55 and older in the area? I mean, obviously you got way out in the villages. The villages, the villages is doing like another billion dollar add-on. I think they said they were going to add 30,000 more roofs, which blows my mind that there's a, that there's that much demand, but here we are. Um, then you've got, like I mentioned earlier, the Oasis in Horizon West. You've got Sierra Noah, the parks at Sierra Noah, I believe it is. 55. There's lots of them. Yeah. Reach out, please. Info at posicgroup.com. We'll hook you up. I've got somebody on my team that actually just does 55 and older community now. Uh, is retail going to pick up in Davenport? Yeah, I think so. Davenport, Haines City and Winter Haven areas to comp <laughs> compensate. So this is a really important point by Chris. So retail 
and schools and all these other things, unfortunately, in many of the developing areas lag years behind the residential space. So many areas, they build all of these houses and then we're all clamoring, like, where do you shop? Where do you send your kids to school? And then eventually the infrastructure comes behind it. And that's the one thing I do like about like what they did in Lake Nona. They built all the infrastructure first, brought in jobs and then backfilled with houses. Like to me, that makes sense. Um, but that's not usually what's done. What's really done is what Chris is mentioning here. So you've got this, all these massive amounts of new homes, not a lot of retail. And so if you look off of 27, Chris, you can see there's a lot of stuff coming down there. Um, Ronald Reagan Parkway. There's a lot of new stuff like that whole Posner Park. Somebody mentioned it earlier today. You know, that place is getting built out. They've got a Starbucks now. So they're, you know, they're legit, right? First watch is there. So they're kind of more and more legit, but they need so much more. Um, so hopefully somebody like a Unicorp or something comes in and builds a lot more. <laughs> uh, hey, Den, I'm just curious. Are you enjoying your cottage pie? I'm just, just sort of curious. Just curious. What is, Joe, what is cottage pie? Now I need to know. That sounds, sounds incredible. Yeah, Farmer George, you're a smart man. The Fed will not raise rates in a substantial way. Debt to GDP ratio is above 100%. U.S. cannot afford to pay payments on debts if they raise rates. But they will. In, in they have to in one way or the other it can't go on forever these like two percent rates where people aren't making any money does not make sense maybe they could but doesn't make a lot of sense mount pleasant michigan good to see you james mcbride my grandpa lived in mount pleasant i'm originally from michigan love that area any updates on the bright line rail so not for the past three or four weeks the last time i'd heard they're still working through eminent domain and trying to make the connections work um, but it does seem like I've, I've actually never seen so many permits and stories about it for a really long time. So it means they're still working on it, which is way different than it was five years ago when it was just an idea and they're just kind of him and Han. Appreciate you being live, man. It means a lot. I got a question while, while we're here, we got like a nine more minutes or so until we, we wrap it up for the day. And I'm going to get to as many more questions as you can. Um, so here's a couple questions for you. So I put out a video, like the top three things that are coming to Orlando that I'm really excited about. And you guys, honestly, it was probably my best performing video I've had in months. And it was my, it was fun for me to do because I like love digging in, doing exactly what we're doing here on Saturdays. Uh, actually, this is probably my favorite thing I get to do is hang out with you guys on Saturdays every once in a while, answer questions and, and just hear your guys' concerns and your thoughts. Anyhow, I put out a video like that and it was probably my best performing video. So I'm curious, um, do you guys watching live? Do you enjoy that? Do you like hearing the new stuff coming in in short form, like eight minutes or less? Here's like the top four things or new stories of the week. If I started doing a little bit more of that instead of just like man on the street, or I at least had a few different buckets, would you guys like that? Would you tune in more? Um, is that something that you really dig? Because for whatever reason, that video really took off. Now, this is a great question. Ezekiel, I haven't seen you on the channel before, so welcome. Uh, are home sales slow down driven by seasonal domestic buyers? Is Orlando getting many of out of US buyers post COVID restrictions driving the prices up? So um, yeah, 30% of our sales in certain areas, like especially the resort markets were internationally driven. We didn't see any of that over the past two years, but it was made up by many people from New York, Jersey, DC, Chicago, Seattle, like a lot of people were buying second homes here and it kind of like evened out our demand. And so we'll see if those people in Jersey, DC, New York, Seattle, if they can now travel and buy other places in the world or just decide to travel more if that slows down and hopefully gets backfilled by the people that are international. So I've, my team and I were already working with literally over a dozen people from the UK. They're like, Hey, we're coming in the end of November to buy a house. And so interestingly enough, like over 10,000 roofs, 10,000 single family homes in the Orlando area are owned by people that live in the EU slash UK. And so it's not a, it's a big number, really big number. And so um, we'll see if, if here's what's going to be interesting. If we still see the domestic buyers coming in droves, plus the international stuff, that's going to make our market continue to go quite crazy. So we'll see. Yes to the short form videos. I like it, Patricia.
Farmer George disagrees with my interest rate idea, the house of cards fall. I agree, but eventually the house of cards are going to fall one way or the other. And so what do they do? Uh, they can't tax us enough to come up with the debt that's owed. And so something needs to happen. I'm not a politician. I have no idea what the answer is, but I uh, don't know. So need to need a video to be at least 10 minutes. Wish it would be 20 information on what's happening around Orlando. I appreciate that, Jay. Dude, I appreciate you coming out. You're always hanging out, answering really thoughtful questions, asking very thoughtful questions. So I really do appreciate it. I think like 10, 12 minutes would be kind of like the format. And I come come on like once a week, talk about, hey, here's the four or five things we found in Orlando coming. Um, I just joined the Orlando Economic Partnership. And I think, I think I'm the only realtor in the Orlando Economic Partnership because it's not cheap, but it puts me in the same room as a lot of these big corporations um, that are hiring a ton. And the reason I joined was to just really figure out more information to pass along to you guys of like, who's hiring, who's, you know, who's, who's coming here. Um, so that'll be interesting, but, uh, cool. Um, your best new video is the bomb curious of the growth East or West Orlando. Mm, that's a good, that's a great video. More land. Orlampa, <laughs> Orlampa. I've heard that a couple term times now. Orlampa. Some people think that Orlando and Tampa are basically just gonna, you know, merge into one huge metropolitan area because, really, from South Orlando to North Tampa, up and down I four, it's only a forty five minute connection. So you've got Lakeland in the middle, and um, I think eventually that will happen. That they're gonna eventually not, you know, connect. I like the short videos. Um, can you do exactly what you're doing? Wouldn't change a thing. I appreciate it. Uh, great information. New year will keep you in mind for help. Thank you so much, Rob. Not a huge fan of the man on the street. A couple of you said that it's fun. I, you know, it's interesting because as an agent, I can't talk about schools like legally. I can't talk about schools. I can't even tell you what areas are safe or not legally. Like, because what happens if I tell you, Hey, the school's district is great. And then you send your kids there and then you go to the state and say, Oh, Ken told me that I moved here. Schools are great. They're not great. My kid's failing, blah, blah, blah. Or you move somewhere that I say is safe and you get robbed. Then you sue me. Like legally, I'm not allowed to say that. So on the man on the street stuff, I can ask other people, hey, what do you think about the area? What do you think of the schools? What do you think? Right. And then it's not coming from me. It's coming from an, in, in, you know, I just, I just happen to be there with the microphone. That's the only reason I do the man on the street stuff, but I know it's not always the same. Jeff's bagel run. I got to know Jeff a little bit more. Uh, this week, he and I grabbed coffee. What a cool story him and Danielle have of just starting the bagel run. If you guys want like authentic bagels, uh, like New York style in Orlando, they're kind of hard to find. Uh, Jeff's Bagel Run in Ocoee, just north of Winter Garden. Super, super good. They're closed on Mondays and Tuesdays, so go there tomorrow. Tell them I sent you. Um, Jeremiah says he likes the different buckets. Yeah, people just want more insight. I agree. That's cool. Um, here's a little little tip for you guys as we're wrapping up, and I'll, I'm going to try to get to at least three or four more questions. So we talked about uh, Genie Plus. So we were there at Disney yesterday, and we were looking through uh, Genie Plus or Genie. It's like Genie is the free one. Genie Plus is allows you to get the Lightning Lanes. Um, but one thing we have been using, like I've actually utilized lately, is touring plans. And I've really loved that app a ton. I don't know if you guys are familiar with what this is, but it's an app. It's like 15 bucks and you go to the park and you tell what park you're at. And it uses some like crazy algorithm to know that like if Disney is, if Disney is saying that Pirates of the Caribbean is a 60 minute wait, it knows based on how many people are in the park, how long the, the wait actually is. And so it, you can actually plan out your day and say, okay, uh, I want to ride these five rides or whatever it is. And it'll tell you which order and when to go. It's very, very cool. Have you ever been on a ride before? And it says it's 45 minutes, but it only took you 10 minutes to get through the line. The line, From what I understand now is that it's because Disney is like trying to move people around the parks based on time of day. If they notice there's a lot of people on the you know future uh, or tomorrow land and they want to move them over to frontier land, they'll put higher, higher wait times over on the buzz ride so that people will go naturally over to the other side of the park and they'll kind of keep things moving. So touring plans is his app and uses an algorithm to like help you better understand that. And I think that is so stinking cool. And so, um, so anyways, we've used it. It's 15 bucks. This is definitely not sponsored by it, but check it out. Let me know what you think. We're going to try Disney genie plus here coming soon and try to compare the two and see which one, uh, gives us a little bit, a little bit more. 
bang for our buck, saves us more time, all that good stuff. Um, don't you need major market to sell their properties for premium so that they can cash buyers in Orlando? Don't I need major markets to sell their properties for a premium so there can be cash buyers in Orlando? Yeah, I mean, we work with, I mean, only 20% of our buyers are cash. So mortgage is just fine. Um, too bad Walt didn't see his Epcot plan. We might be behind on the right inside. Yeah, well, hey, listen, you can buy houses almost right inside the park. You just got to have Golden Oak kind of money. Um. Yeah, for sure. So I mentioned Disney Springs a couple times. So I wanted to know what I think of Polite Pig is a highlight of local Orlando offerings. Yeah, for sure. Here's the thing. So I love Polite Pig. I think they make really good slow roast. Their pulled pork is really good. Gideon's actually used to sell their cookies there before they opened up their own shop on top of East End Market. I don't know if you knew that. Um, but yeah, Polite Pig's awesome. We actually did a few different. We did Ravenous Pig on the Orlando Reel. There's a couple other local ones as well. So good spotlight. Good idea. So we see a lot of available properties east of Conway near the college campuses that's deemed, is that deemed too far from the parks? It's really, a, I mean, you deem what's too far from the parks one way or the other. Um, but I mean, like a, like Oviedo over by UCF, all that kind of stuff. I think that that area has, still has a lot of room to go in terms of pricing. I think you can still get a decently new house, you know, in the Avalon Park area. Actually, Avalon Park area has a new development coming. Madame Homes is going to be building there. So if you like the Avalon Park area and which is just like, you know, 15 minutes north of Lake Nona, 15, 18 minutes. Um, and so that puts you 40 minutes from the parks. Some people like that. Some people want to be far enough from the parks that they don't have to worry about tourism traffic and all the other kind of stuff, but close enough to drop down and use it if you want to. Um, so anyways, hope that's helpful. <laughs> well, Tavistock is owned by a Brit. So um, I think he lives more in the UK than he even lives here. So I don't know. Check it out. The Tottenham Spurs. I think that's his team. Um, <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. Um, Ned Kelly asks, is there, has Universal got their own version of Golden Oak? They don't. Um, I've talked about this in the past. I think, I don't know that Universal has a big enough, like, emotional following and let me know what you think in the comments below. I don't know that universal has a big enough emotional following to have somebody invest millions of dollars or even a million dollars in a home. That's like on property. I mean, they have Epic universe. They have some land. They could do something similar if they wanted to, but I think people have more of like this emotional tie with Disney that they want to be part of the magic. And I've never, I've never heard anybody say like, I want to be part of the universal magic. Now, if they made a Harry Potter neighborhood, I'd be tempted, <laughs> but, um, but no, I don't think that they will. I don't think that they're going to have it. You guys, uh, you guys came out in force. Honestly, I, um, I really appreciate you taking some time on Saturday. This always means the world that you'd come hang out with me on Saturday, talk about real estate, talk about Orlando, just stuff that I'm super passionate about. And I'm glad you are as well. So um, as we wrap up today, make sure if you're not following me on Instagram, you do that. I interact with a lot of you guys on a weekly basis. And so if you pop in, people are all the time asking me, what do you think about this area? What do you think about this restaurant? Whatever it is, and I'm happy to interact and, and help however I can. Um, I think that's where I'm going to leave it for today. But uh, hey, appreciate you guys. I hope you have an amazing rest of the weekend. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Talk to you soon. Happy Halloween.